Drayton Manor is my home park, and I've had some great visits throughout the years. I first really want to talk about the park's location, which is really pretty. I love how a lot of the park is centered around this lake, and when you're on some of the attractions, you get quite close to the water, and yeah, it's just really cool. I'm a big fan of parks that utilize the landscape to their advantage. You once got an epic view of the surrounding area on Apocalypse, which was the park's Intamin Drop Tower. It's a real shame they removed it, but I'll discuss this later on in my review. Drayton Manor, for the most part, is presented well. The majority of the attractions look presentable, and can I just say, I am very happy with what the park has done over the past two years. Since the new owners came in, the park has been looking so much better than it used to. They rethemed the entire area around Shockwave into Adventure Cove, reopened the rapids, added a swing ride and a play area, it just looks great. And let's not forget that in 2022, they opened Vikings, which featured new attractions for the park such as Thor and Loki, one of the most impressive rides in the country. I could honestly watch this thing go round for hours. The area also featured a retheme of the old Buffalo Coaster, which I was never a big fan of, but I'm glad it's staying so that others can enjoy it. As you may have noticed by now, Drayton Manor's target market is definitely for the families. I can't believe I haven't mentioned this yet, but they have Thomas Land. Many thanks to Theme Park Family Worldwide for the footage. The land is full of attractions for children, including a roller coaster, so if you're cred counting, don't forget that one. I don't think you need me to tell you, but this huge area is themed to Thomas the Tank Engine, so there's lots of rides themed to different characters, like you have Cranky the Crane Drop Tower, a Bertie the Bus flat ride. Honestly, when I was younger, I had an absolute blast in this part of the park. Whilst in Thomas Land, you can travel behind Thomas to the other end of the park, which has a play area, and more importantly, a zoo. There's lots of animals, including red pandas, tigers, yes, real tigers, monkeys, and loads more. It is a bit annoying that you can't walk from Thomas Land directly to the zoo. There's this big dead end, so please don't make the same mistake I did on my last visit. But now let's get into some of the bigger rides that Drayton Manor has to offer. The big roller coaster for your teens, your adults, and your roller coaster enthusiasts like me is Shockwave. It's the only stand up roller coaster in the country, and it does get a bit of backlash for that. But I don't hate Shockwave. I actually find it an enjoyable roller coaster if you position the restraints correctly. For those not tall enough to ride Shockwave, there's a Vekoma boomerang called Accelerator, and it's more intense than it looks. Definitely not your usual kiddie coaster. The best flat ride on park is Maelstrom, and for many, this is the best thing at Drayton Manor, and I wouldn't blame you for thinking that. This Intamin gyro swing provides some great moments of intensity and flow to airtime. On my last visit, I was really impressed by Maelstrom. Finally, we've got my favourite water ride in the country, that being Storm Force 10. This boat ride is a long experience, and overall just really fun to go on. You do get absolutely drenched though, so be sure to wear something appropriate. And yeah, that's about it in terms of the park's major attractions for thrill seekers. Don't get me wrong, I'm really happy with the direction Drayton Manor wants to go in, but it is coming at a cost. Sadly, Drayton Manor have been removing some of their more thrilling attractions over the past few years. There used to be this unique roller coaster called G Force, which is gone, Pandemonium, gone, and now we've just lost one of, if not the best, drop tower in the country, that being Apocalypse. It's a real shame because I really enjoyed that ride in particular. Some other notable attractions to do that are still open are Sheriff Showdown, a shooter dark ride, The Haunting, which is a cool madhouse, always enjoy one of these myself, and there's other flat rides at the park, like your classic pirate ship. Most rides are close enough to each other, so you don't have to walk very far between attractions, but it would be nice if there were more themed audio throughout the park. I feel as if that would improve your experience and make things a bit more immersive. Now, what would I like to see built at Drayton Manor in the future? Well, as of the recording of this video, there's markings around Apocalypse. I'm almost certain that this will be a cool flat ride of some sort, or even a roller coaster. You never know. However, what I think would really benefit Drayton Manor is a small, family wooden roller coaster. Nothing too big, maybe have it interact with the lake a little bit, and yeah, I think this could be a really good investment for them. I am hopeful about Drayton Manor's future. If you have a family and have young kids, definitely take them to this park. There's no shortage of rides for them to go on, especially if they like Thomas the Tank Engine. 
Thanks for watching, subscribe if you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.